Hey guys, Stitching May here. Um, I'm going to try to show you how to make these needle minders. Whoa, they kind of jumped around there. Um, that I've made. I got this idea off of Pinterest, and I will leave a link to the blog in the description of the video. Um, these are pretty easy to make. And um, first of all, before I get into the supplies and stuff, I don't know if you can hear the music. If you can, that is my son's lullaby music, and I apologize events um he has to have it at night so and then the only places that has enough light at night for me to record is my dining room so you'll just kind of have to bear with it um so anyway let's get to the supplies you'll need you'll need a set of magnets this is in the eight pack so it'll be enough to make four needle minders because you need two needle minders or two magnets per needle minder these are level six and the strength rating I guess it's called a, I don't know, it's got some other rating on here that I have no clue about, so I'm not going to tell you about it. It says, warning, it contains magnets, and they're choking hazards, so be careful. Don't let your kids chew in the magnets. Um, you'll need the button forms. This is actually just the refill pack. <clears throat> These were on sale, I think, all this week for 50% off at Hobby Lobby. It's their Soology brand. But, um... This is just the refills. I actually had another package that was called a kit and it comes with this silicone form and this high tech pusher is what they call it. It's just the piece of plastic, but they say you need the pusher. And the button forms just look like this. There's one domed piece and one back piece. They actually have them that are flat and don't have this hook here, but they did not have them at the store at that time. So I had to get them with the hook, but I'll show you how you fix that in a minute. You'll need some glue. I, I, I can't recommend the glue. Um, this is the glue that the blog called for. So this is the glue I got. I have no clue anything about glues. I did notice that this has got a possible cancer agent in it. So I would limit your exposure to it if you can. Um, I'm sure any other type of glue would work. But I don't know a lot about glue. So I just got the one they said to use. A pair of scissors. <clears throat> and some fabric and in my case because I have this hook you will need some pliers or some wire cutters okay so I made the package comes with a circle template on it and when I try to pull it off I just pulled it in pieces I read on the blog or maybe another blog that said that um they actually cut square pieces and it seemed to be a little bit quicker for them so this is just a template that I made out of a soap box it actually smells really good it smells like my soap but um it's just a two by two piece of um cardboard to use as a template and I had some leftover fabric that's where I got the daisy from but I kind of cheated and I had some of their fabric on sale at Hobby Lobby and I got this because it's all patchwork and I can do several di different button types with this fabric alone so let's see I think I'm gonna start I really like this but I don't think any of my pieces of this are gonna be big, big enough to oh it is yay so I'm gonna start off with one of these because I really like that black and turquoise so I'm going to start off and I'm just going to cut out my piece of fabric. That way I can get out of the way. Please excuse my cutting and sewing. I'm horrible. I am not a sewer fabric person by nature. So if I'm cutting against the grain or with the grain or something horrible, just ignore it. I do this enough just to serve its purpose. Like I said, this is just a guesstimate. It doesn't have to be exactly two by two. Okay. I don't know if I was on frame when I was cutting, so you may not have saw my horrible, horrible cutting skills. Okay, so there's my piece of fabric. <clears throat> now, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get rid of this hook. And these are some of my husband's wire cutters, and I'll probably have to buy them a new pair when I'm done with them. So I'm just cutting that wire in half and it kind of bends out. And sometimes you need the needle and most pliers to kind of get it all the way off here. Kind of bend it back and forth and eventually it'll come out. Now I have a flat button back. 
Okay, now with this one I had to be more careful to kind of try to center up the button and this one too. But with this fabric, I don't have to be exact. So I'm not gonna worry about it being too exact. I'm gonna kinda see where it's gonna land. So, I mean, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't matter on this one. So the way this works is you put your silicone form down, you put your fabric on there on top. And I think you're supposed to do all three at the same time, but I don't, just because I don't. I go ahead and push this form down in there and that kind of gathers the fabric up. Then you take your form, you know, remember this indented side's gonna be the back. Put it on top. Kind of try to make sure that all your fabric's tucked in, that you don't have any like little edges sticking out. Put that on there. Take this pusher and push, and you'll kind of feel it set in. I kind of twist while I push and make sure it's on there well. Then you pop it out of the thing and there's your button. That's the easy part. Actually, that's the hard part. The easy part is gluing the magnet on. So you have two magnets that are already open. You want, I mean, at first I felt kind of silly because I was like, okay, it's got to go this way. But if you accidentally glue the wrong side up, the other side, just, you know how magnets work. And I do too. It was just kind of one of those moments where I was done. I was all worried about sticking the wrong side of the magnet down. Apparently my glue has glued itself shut. There it goes. This stuff stinks to high heaven. Whoa. Put a dab of glue there. Maybe more than a dab. I don't know. Maybe using way too much glue. And you stick your magnet down. Try your best to get it centered up. And you're done. See? Now, I mean, it's not ready to use, it's kind of dry, but there, I kind of got, I didn't get the edge all the way in, but that's okay. Okay. I'll make one more. <clears throat> Let's see, which just made one of those, one of these. I don't want to make that one, I think. I like the, that one a lot. I wonder if any of these are going to be big enough. Oh, it's going to work. Oh, look, this one right here is closer to the edge. I'm not cutting up tons of fabric to get to it. By the way, I should note, this is not my tablecloth. <laughs> This is just an old bit. I bought it a twin size bed sheet on sale to use as a kind of drop cloth whenever I'm doing any crafts. See this one I meant by the end and it actually I may have done that one backwards. That may work better though. Actually it does. Yes, it doesn't matter which side you push down. Because I did that one backwards. I did this side down instead. And that gave a little more room for the oops, the magnet. Yep, I can't pull it off to show you. But see, it can go in this way. I think it's a technical way it's supposed to go, but I kind of pushed mine in that way. But it did the same thing, so I do it the right way this time, though. Okay. Push my button down in the mold. Put the top on. Oops. Actually, I like it better the indented way out because it kind of hides the magnet a little bit better. I'm going to do it wrong again on purpose. Now watch, because I do it wrong, the whole button will fall apart. Okay. Make sure this all tucked in. 
Sometimes if you have a whole lot of extra fabric, you can just kind of trim the edges off. These scissors are horrible. My husband has cut something he's not supposed to with them. Then on top, take your pusher. That one actually kind of snapped. And here's the button. And then again. That might be why it's a little harder to push it in there because it's backwards. Here's my glue. Now I'm going to glue it on. I just kind of the way that has the indention there to hold the magnet. This one's not exactly on it. It's these little gray dots on here and that's the exact size it was. So I just used it. I'm going to use it and just deal with it that it's a little bit short. But I think it'll be fine. And I am going to go ahead and cut out another one because I'm going to make two buttons. And I'm almost going to kind of line this one up center, I think. So I want this kind of to be the center of the... No, I want one of these to be the center of this, I think. What's this one? Yeah, I want one of these to kind of be the center. And little flower pieces. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our first button, and I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this little hook part. Actually, I'm going to leave it on the door. I don't put the wrong side down. What I did earlier is once I cut this off, you can't tell which side's down and which side's up. And I put it into the button this way, which I don't know that it really matters. It's holding the fabric fine, as you can see. But I don't think that the, because of the size of the magnet, when it's this way, it's not getting like a good, it's almost too big to get a good stick to the glue. So I am going to do it the right way with this little part up. That way it can stick to the magnet very well. And so I'm going to use that, leave that on there. It's just kind of to where I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to push the one. I don't know if you heard it kind of pop in there. Always kind of twist to make sure it's good and on there. And take it out of the button form. And there's your button. Now, I don't know that it would have mattered. Because see how this is popping up and out? Earlier they were just ending in like that. And I don't know that it would make a big difference as far as the button goes, except, like I said, that the magnet wasn't sticking as well. Now that that's in there, I'm going to take my wire cutters and cut the back of the button off. Like I said, they do have flat ones. They've got larger ones and smaller ones. It just depends on what size you want. You want to kind of hold your button together as you do this because you don't want to accidentally pull the, the back out of the button. You can do that. Um, the other day when I was making my first ones, I didn't have the fabric all the way in there. And I actually used that piece to pull the back of the button out and redo it. So, okay. They're pretty strong. Pretty strong magnet. So I don't know if you can tell. But now you're going to glue. I put a lot of glue on. I may use too much glue. And I'm just going to stick this down here. I'm going to let it dry. 
and it does take a while to dry. Okay, we'll do one more. I'll come pushing in. You'll notice that like where you have more fabric it's harder to push it in. I can't even get this one to push in. There it goes. Because it's thicker. And look. That's what I meant by some of my fabric stuck out. And that drives me mad. So I may see if I can get this to come off and do it again. Nope. Oh there it goes. Yay. Just let them dry and I'll sit and let them dry. The other night it took about two to three hours for these to dry completely to where they weren't. That other's actually pretty set in. That one's good to go. And that's one of the ones I did backwards. So that's good to know. Okay, well that's everything for now. I um, hope this helped. I hope you enjoyed watching. I'll flip these this way so you can see what I've done. Thanks for watching.